Hi, in this session, we'll talk about some practical guidance for securing AI in the context of business applications and other workflows. AI is clearly transformative technology, but, but many of the risks and controls we can apply to mitigate those risks have, have much in common with the established practices that we've used for many existing systems and our more traditional AI deployments for a long time. But there are also many nuances associated with generative AI that we meet, need to pay particular attention to. Some of these AI-specific risks, and they're, they're not just confined to generative AI, include hallucinations where models produce inaccurate content for the con context in which they're being used. Uh, and there are many constructs for different types of use cases that can ground and improve the accuracy of responses. And the settings and control of this should be carefully selected depending on the end use case. For example, if you want a model to help with imagining new creative writing, then you probably will care less about this as compared to using a model to answer some healthcare related questions where you're obviously going to care a lot about making sure there's accuracy and, and groundedness. Other risks listed here include leaking of sensitive data via a model's output that, that may have been an unintended consequence of some training data exposure. Um, we also have vulnerabilities that could exist in underlying infrastructure, things like permitting the misuse of a model for nefarious purposes beyond, beyond its original state, stated safety goals. And then there's also the possibility that uh, models may be tainted through training data or other parameters that effectively backdoor the model into behaving against its broader training. Uh, this is obviously particularly concerning in an adversarial scenario. And there are also further adversarial tactics that include prompt manipulation and subversion and, and many other techniques. And, and of course, we also still need to worry, as we always always had to, that other, with other forms of AI, about biases as a consequence of poor training data selection or insufficiently well-controlled fine-tuning and training. Now, the secure, safe, and trusted use of AI encompasses a set of techniques that, that many teams have not historically brought together. And in the past few years, as a result of this, we thought it'd be useful as Google if we encoded many of our practices that we've already developed for this into what we call our secure AI framework. And we, we published this last year for the, uh, for the benefit of the overall community. Now, SAFE is made up of, of, of six principles in turn that's backed by a lot of detailed content on how to apply these principles. And we'll, we'll go through the detail of this in the rest of this session. But in simple terms, it's all about making sure the foundation of our AI tooling embeds security, as we have done with many other platforms. It's about making sure that conventional cyber detection and response is expanded to monitor for AI abuses and that our perspective on threats is broadened to watch for an attacker's exploitation of or the use of AI. And also, we should make sure we are using AI for our own defensive advantage, generally as well as specifically to counter AI risks. In other words, AI techniques applied to protect the trust and safety of AI itself is, is vital. Then we need to deliver AI controls in frameworks so every instance or deployment is not reinventing the wheel, that we get the benefit of that common framework across all things, just like we've historically done with things like application security. And then we also need to make sure that as we get and as we do for other areas, that we have strong and fast feedback loops to adjust defenses, not just against cyber attacks, but also other risk and control issues that come from AI deployments. And then finally, we need to make sure that we think about the end-to-end -end risk and control objectives in the systems in which AI is deployed. In other words, remember that the problem is an end-to-end -end business process or mission objective, not just a point technical problem in the environment. So we'll now go deeper to further ex explore the aspects of AI across data, software, and the operational risks of deployment. Now, when we look at a typical AI, de AI deployment, there are a number of interacting components from the application, the model, the serving and training infrastructure, and the management and governance of the data that trains, tunes, tests, or augments the models. So let's first look at the, look at the data controls as we go through this. Uh, I think we're all likely familiar with, with many of the risks associated with the potential abuse of training data, and that could also include fine tuning, and test data 
and the need to protect that to reduce the risk of unexpected or adversarial abuse of the deployed model. And mitigating the risks of data poisoning is vital, as is ensuring the appropriateness of the data for other risks that may come of concern. So recommendation one is to make sure that the data used for training and tuning is sanitized and protected, and above all, that the lineage or provenance of that data is maintained with strong integrity. Now, obviously, you can't just wish this were true. You have to actually do the work to curate and track the use of data. And it helps if you have controls and tools to do this. And this should be a factor in, in how you select technology to, to work with. Now, at Google, given our wider experience of AI and the safe and responsible use of large collections of data, we've embedded many of these goals into our AI products, uh, like you see with our Data Lineage API. And underpinning all the other objectives are, are underlying infrastructure protection goals. And again, this is very similar to other fields, but has particular, um, particular nuances uh, in, in AI. Now, the way to think about this is this infrastructure is a, a set of hardware and software acting together to deliver model training, fine tuning, testing and serving capabilities with inbuilt security and other controls to mitigate AI risk. And this is particularly important to assure that models are not tampered with either in the software, the weights, or, uh, or any of their other parameters. And as discussed earlier, we also need to focus on data lineage and governance and that the infrastructure should contribute to that goal by resisting the introduction of data that doesn't fall strongly into that, into that controlled process. Now, if we don't take care of this, we expose ourselves to multiple difference, the different flavors of, of backdoor risks that can compromise the security and safety of the deployed business or, or, or mission process. Uh, and so recommendation two is to make sure that strong access control, controls are maintained on models, code, data, and, and perhaps uncharacteristically for some organizations, should include very strong controls on the protection of test data because the test data can influence model behavior in interesting and uh, potentially risky ways. And we've seen some organizations do a great job of managing all of their training data, but not necessarily taking as much care with the test data and that leaves them, uh, that leaves them exposed. Now, there are lots of lessons to take from all the work in recent years on end-to-end on -end software supply chain integrity. And, and in fact, we can use many of the same transparency approaches like SIGSTOR to implement strong model problems, just like we have with ensuring strong software lifecycle controls uh, across our internal and external software supply chains. And again, like many other cybersecurity risks, we need to augment strong preventative controls with detective controls through pervasive logging and observability. And we've again implemented many capabilities in our Vertex tooling to do this, to just make this part of the environment. So now let's move on to some model specific risks, which again, for everybody, are clearly at the heart of what, uh, what a lot of organizations are focused on. Now, as we all now know, there are many risks to the use and abuse of models uh, of which prompt injection can be a, be a major source of issues. Um, and there are plenty of examples of, of manipulating prompts directly and indirectly to cause unintended outcomes in the face of naively defended or, in fact, flat out unprotected models. This could be embedding text, it could be embedding images or other input in single or multimodal models. And that in dispersion of the problematic prompts can perturb the output, and so steps need to be taken to mitigate this risk. So recommendation three is, is to make sure inputs to models are filtered for a range of trust, safety, and security goals. Uh, and in fact, much of the headline grabbing attention is, is triggering on unsafe content generation. Now, some of this can be, uh, can be quite amusing. I'm sure you've seen all seen plenty of cases for this as people, when they encounter a new model, attempt to get it to misbehave. But it's again indicative of the need to not just manage the input, but manage the output of models as well. And so recommendation four is to apply filters and outbound controls on model use. And this isn't just the classic examples of stopping harmful content generation despite best efforts to filter for the input to stop that output, but it should also include controls and if you like circuit breakers around how a model 
in the context of an application can manipulate data or actuate physical processes. So again, this is another area where you should expect more from the platforms and tools that you're using. For example, we'll soon be previewing our model armor tool set, and this is designed to help you as you use all of our tools to move all of this to, uh, to, to a policy control layer rather than having to implement this yourself lower down the stack. Um, and we'll also be providing many policy controls over other safety attributes, which, which again are important in managing the risks of your deployments. And again, this is part of the theme of making sure that these things are built into an end-to-end -end platform that controls the data, controls the software lifecycle, and helps you manage the operational risk of, uh, of AI integration into business processes, applications, mission processes. And this isn't just about features in products. We, we know organizations may need to integrate their own tooling. Uh, and so again, for the benefit of the community, we've open sourced a thing we call Shield Gemma uh, to help you build your own input and output filters. So if you don't want to rely on an end-to-end platform, we've provided some technology and open source form from what we built internally to let you more deeply integrate and customize that. Now looking at applications, you know, clearly this is where all of this is brought together to deliver your business or mission outcomes in a, in a, in a risk managed way. And again, this is where we need to make sure there's, there's high integrity use of authorized models from well-defended infrastructure. But ultimately here it's about mitigating the operational risks of the actions of the model's output. In essence, to control the agent behavior to provide defense in depth for unintended actions. And so the recommendation here is to sandbox and enforce least privilege on all of your AI applications. A model-driven application's interaction with other systems should be governed and protected and likely shielded through some independent monitoring, API filters, and as we said before, even some circuit breaker-like constructs that can validate and regulate behavior. And, and further to this, it's important to run your applications in locked down modes and to focus on observability and logging of actions. And then also making sure, just like with any other aspect of technology, that you're monitoring for and addressing software vulnerabilities in the supporting infrastructure itself. So wrapping up, you, you can see managing AI systems risk is a, is a collection of objectives, not unlike many other fields of risk management and security. And in simple terms, it's a combination of making sure you've got a handle on data governance, software lifecycle controls of the models and the parameters and the weights and the other aspects of supporting the AI deployment, and the operational risk management of connecting those systems to your wider business or mission environment. So it's all about sanitizing, protecting, and governing your training, tuning, and test data. It's about enforcing strong access controls on the models, the data, the software, and the deployed infrastructure. As we talked about, it's about filtering inputs and outputs to and from those models. And then finally, making sure that you're sandboxing model use and applications in some risk and control framework that provides defense in depth against not just adversarial driven behavior, but also from accidental model misbehavior. So seizing all of this AI opportunity is, is, is vital, but as with any other technological advance, that opportunity is maximized when we limit the downside risk as well. Now to help you do this, uh, and to help many companies do this, we, we've created with a number of other technology companies and AI labs, the Coalition for Secure AI. And this is gonna be the, the open source home for the secure AI framework that we originally developed, along with a whole number of associate tools and guidance that don't just come from Google, but come from many of the other Coalition for Secure AI members. And so we hope all of you will consider joining this so we can collectively maximize the opportunity to transform the world with AI in safe, secure, and responsible ways. And of course, continue on the strong and broad partnership on all of these topics around the secure and safe management of AI in the context of all of the work that's happening within the Cloud Security Alliance as well. So with that, I'll close and I'll say thank you and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the conference as well. Thank you.